Don't forget to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so you know when videos drop. Thanks for watching. This is so exciting. I get to share with you, my viewers, my mom, Bertha Fett's icebox strudel. She made this when we were kids on Christmas and maybe some other occasions, but I remember Christmas. And I said, when I grow up someday, I want to learn how to make it because it's so yummy. And I did. And you start off with a half a pound of nice and soft butter. And then you mix into it a tablespoon of white sugar. And then you get three eggs. You have to separate these eggs and make sure once you get the whites, you place them in a bowl that's never been used before. So when you whip them up, they'll be really nice and frothy. Oh my goodness. Now I was told once if you use a copper dish, it'll even be better. But I've used this dish ever since I made this back in the 70s. Now the next part is very important. You have to have one package of yeast mixed in with warm water and then you have a fourth cup of milk and a half a teaspoon of salt and two cups of flour and then you mix them in that order and then once they're mixed you make them into a bowl and a round bowl and then you throw them in the refrigerator overnight. Now some people may not want to wait, they may want to start early in the morning and create this recipe of dough and then wait three or four hours, but I've never done it that way. I always do it like today and then tomorrow we'll roll out the dough and make the icebox strudel. So here it is, I'm going to show you how I mix it up. Okay. The first step is I'm taking the butter, which is right here, and I'm mixing in the sugar right with it. And that, remember, is a tablespoon of sh white sugar and I'm mixing it around and getting it nice and smushy and mushy and I get it really good and it's really helpful if the butter is nice and soft which it is I'm using my famous wooden spoon I love it all right so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in three yolks of eggs now I separated that if you recall and the whites are put aside to mix up the frothy filling for tomorrow. So I'm going to mix up the egg yolks in with that, get them in there nice and good, and mix them up really well. Put this in the sink, and it really makes it nice and good. Oh my goodness. Those organic eggs just are nice and yellow. And they're just really fantastic. Okay, I'm trying to get the butter out here and get it nice and mixed up. I want to incorporate it really good. I can remember my mom spending hours mixing this, and I thought, well, just do it. And she says, nope, you got to make sure all the ingredients are ready to go. All right, the next part I have to do is I have to go ahead and set this aside for a second. And I'm going to mix up the yeast with the warm water. And then I'm going to stir it in a little bit and get a, a little knife here to kind of stir it in. I like to do this and let it sit aside for a second or so. And I remember my mom used to do this all the time. I like the smell of the yeast in the warm water. And then as it's being stirred here. You can see the bubbles come. And we'll wait about a minute or so. Ah, that really looks great. And let's see what we got next. Uh, while I'm waiting for that to go, I'm going to put in the fourth of a cup of milk into the mixture while the yeast is doing its thing. I'll move the yeast aside and I'm going to put the milk in there first. Usually I do the yeast first and then the milk, but that's okay. Since I'm filming, it's not going to make a difference. Ah, it's looking good. Wow, it looks like the yeast is bubbling up. If you can kind of see, that's hard. And I'm just going to pour that into this mixture. And then now I'm going to continue 
to mix this up and make it go good here. Ah, yes. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is put in my half a teaspoon of salt into it and kind of get that incorporated in the dough. It's kind of a soupy mixture right now, but that'll change here shortly when I put in my two cups of flour. Here she goes. There's my two cups of flour. And now this is the part that's really fun. You get to mix it up. You can see it's going to be fun. All the ingredients are going really good. And the best part about this is it's almost done. After a few minutes of kneading it with my hands, and boy, that's sure fun. Sometimes the dough is a little sticky, so you have to make sure you have extra flour around to help yourself out. And my mom always said, when the dough stops sticking to your hands, you know you're ready. So now, it's a nice ball here. I took it out of the, out of the container. Now I make it into a nice round ball because I'm going to separate it into four pieces after it comes out of the refrigerator tomorrow. And I'm placing it on some wax paper here. I don't know why she said wax paper. You could have used maybe some uh, cling wrap or ceram wrap or something like that. But I've always used wax paper. So I stick it right in the center. And I fold off one end there and one end there. And then I wrap it underneath and make sure I keep the ball nice together. And then you place this beautiful dough in the ice box. I guess that's why she called it the ice box strudel. One other thing, we used to call it pigle. Now, Mrs. Peacock always laughs at us. Oh, no. My nephew Doug and I were the only two who remember calling it that. But we'll call it ice box strudel for everybody else. So here it is. We'll see you tomorrow, ready to roll it out right here. And boy, I can smell the kitchen with the beautiful smells of the icebox strudel. It's 24 hours later, and I have my three egg whites ready to be beaten up and make real frothy with some three-fourths of a cup of sugar. And that's exciting. And I've got my cool peacock apron that I got for Christmas from Mrs. Peacock. Since I've been doing a lot of baking and cooking lately, she thought it'd be appropriate to have an apron that has a peacock on it, and I agree. I'm so excited to get started, and here we go. I've got the beater ready to go, the egg whites are room temperature, and here we go. We're gonna beat these up. I'm going to pour in the three-fourths cup of sugar in here as I beat up the eggs. It's a little noisy. Here she goes. Now I'm going to set aside the beater and the egg whites and I'm going to get the dough out of the refrigerator and so I don't trip on my cord here. It's very important to note that you have to keep the dough refrigerated until you need it. I'm going to take the dough right now and I'm going to cut it into four equal portions. You could do as big or as little as you like 
but four seems to work out good. My mom always made it in three, but I decided to make it in four. Let's get the dough and cut it out. Oh, by the way, a couple of my friends on my last peacock cookie episode said, you got to keep it refrigerated. I should have known better because I've always made this and I've always kept the dough in the refrigerator until I needed it. Got the dough out of the refrigerator. I'm unwrapping it from the wax paper. And boy, isn't that look nice? It is beautiful. Now, I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it in four equal portions. That's why I made the ball as equal as I could possibly do it. It's a little hard because it's cool. So let me cut this. Got to get my strength up here. Okay. And I'm going to cut it again in fourths. And cut the other one. And I'm going to place the other three back in the refrigerator until this is completely rolled out. So now, here's that nice, wonderful ball of dough. And I'm going to roll it out really thin and use lots of flour. And here we go. What I like to do is I like to kind of get it going first with a little flour in my hand and make a little round circle before I roll it out and kind of do it like I'm doing now. It's kind of easier to get it to the right size that I need to have. And I'm getting closer to the rolling it out on this wonderful new sheet that we have to do it. It's the first time I've used this um, with a strudel. I use it for the peacock cookies and it works really good. I think we're ready. Gonna make sure that's ready to go. Put a little on there. I got a nice round circle. I'm going to get the rolling kit and this is going to be a little easier for me than doing those peacock cookies. I shouldn't have the problem with it sticking to here and it's moving, which is okay. And this dough, as opposed to my peacock cookies, has to be nice and thin, because I then put that wonderful egg white mixture with all the other ingredients there. And you'll see later what I'm using. Here we go. It's been a minute or so. I like to get this nicely rolled out. Now I'm going to take my egg white mixture with my special spatula and I what I like to do is just cut the mixture of egg whites in half and in quarters and then I like to take out one quarter of it and place it on the dough and it's not always easy to get it out but it comes out and it usually gives you an equal amount of the egg white and sugar mixture onto your dough. A little sloppy today, but it's working out really nice. There we go. And the rest of this will be used for the other three strudels. I like to spread it all over the dough and get it to the far edges of the dough. And one of the things that I remember as growing up as a kid was mom used to just roll it up and not worry about the ends. I said, there's nothing good in the ends. So now I do it a little differently. And you'll see near the end of me making this roll here, how and we do that. You don't have to do that. You can make it the way you want to. If you want to roll it up and have a nice pointed edge, that's fine. This looks like this is almost ready to go. The next part is fun. I like to spread a little cinnamon. We got some good, expensive cinnamon that we spread out. And I just, oh, I got a little heavy there. If you have a shaker, sometimes that works better. Yeah, I've got to make sure I get it all the parts. Mrs. Peacock, do you think there's enough here? Can you see? I think so. You think so? Yeah, it's a little bit thick in a couple spots. 
We're using a different cinnamon than we did last year when I made this. All right, the next thing I do is I take some of my nuts. Now, we're using pecans, and you could choose to use any kind of nut you like. We choose pecans. Mrs. Peacock likes them nice and thin. You can have them nice and crunchy, whatever you like. And then I just pour this on and just sprinkle it on here. It's really kind of fun. And I like to make it really thick. The thicker, the better for us. But sometimes when you roll it up, it kind of <laughs> wants to come out. But you can make it work any way you want. The pecans are nicely thin and they're coming out really wonderful. The next thing I'm going to put on here in a moment is semi-sweet chocolate chips. You don't have to use any of these ingredients. You can chase it yourself up to any way you want to. I don't believe my mom ever used chocolate chips. Here's a chocolate chips. And we spread them out. It's kind of fun. Mrs. Peacock likes lots of chocolate chips. So I've added lots of them in here for her liking. And then I've started to like it a lot better. Some people like to use raisins. My nephew, Doug, loves poppy seeds, I think he said. Uh, sometimes it's harder for us to get that in the Midwest here. If you live in a big city, you might be able to get it. Oh, wow. I'm going through quite a bit here. The recipe calls for 16 ounces of nuts. But you can do whatever you like. Ah, we're getting real good. And then a little brown sugar. Got some good organic brown sugar here. And I like to roll it in my hand like this so it's not too clumpy. It's kind of cool. A little bit more. Mrs. Peacock, does this look okay to you from over there? Looks good to me. Yeah, Mrs. Peacock's watching. She's waiting because the end result is going to be the part she's looking forward for. So I got it all ready to go. Now, here comes the fun part. Mom used to just roll it up like this way. Well, I do. I take one end like here, and I make a square like this, and I pat it down. And I do the opposite side the same way. And then I take each end like here and make it just like that. And I kind of push it down. That's what makes these ends really good because there's always something good in the end. And I do the same here. So now, this is the fun part. I get to roll this up into a nice little roll. Got to get it in here. Pop. Push it down a little bit. Oh, wow. This is coming out really good. Look how beautiful that is. Didn't stick. And I kind of like to touch the ends. I like to pat it down a little bit. You can see the chocolate chips sticking out there. If you had raisins in there, it would stick out that way too. And then I kind of push it in. And then I get my parchment paper out and I place it on the end of the parchment paper waiting for the other three to be made. And there it is. Isn't that beautiful? Now I'm going to make the other three. I'm back. It's been about an hour since I showed you the first one of the icebox doodles and how you put it together. And now it's time to put it in a 350 degree oven for 25 minutes. And then we'll let it cool and you know what happens next. We get to sample it and that is exciting. But first, before I put it in the oven, I remember my mom used to get whole milk and that's what we drink here in our house. And she used to splash whole milk on top of the icebox strudel. If you have a pastry brush, that's okay to use. But I use the old-fashioned pastry brush, my fingers. So I just put a little bit of it on there. And it gets a little shiny. It's kind of fun, actually. I'm going to move here and get the other guys out here. Frankly, I have no idea what this does. Other than maybe it makes it nice and smooth when it comes out of the oven. The next part's going to be so good. In the next 25 minutes, this house is going to smell the best it has in a long time. Or at least since we made it last. It's so fun to make this. But if you're planning on making this, you better have, for your first attempt, have a good hour and a half to plan on doing this. The dough works fine when it comes out of the refrigerator. I've always done that. Mom always said, 
Make sure that dough is out of that refrigerator and don't let the other parts of the dough out of the refrigerator until you need them. And she's right. I wish I would have known that when I was actually making my peacock cookies. Well, there it is, a little bit on the edge. We're done, and in the oven it goes. Time's up. It's been 25 minutes. Gotta get the icebox strudel out of the oven. Here we go. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. This is the best fish in the whole world. This is my mom, Bertha Fett's icebox strudel, and boy, this is wonderful. The good news is the icebox strudel didn't have any problems with any blowouts, just a little bit over here, but normally that doesn't happen. So there it is, our icebox strudel. Thanks, Mom. We'll always remember you every Christmas and several times during the year when we make this wonderful dessert. I hope you get a chance to make it. And Mrs. Peacock, are you ready to have some? Yep, I'm ready. In about an hour, once it cools off, we're going to enjoy this for the next several days. Thanks for viewing. Hey viewers, don't forget to make a donation. The link's below. Order the Wacky World of Peafowl books at peafowl.com.